High Chemistry HL, um, and other people. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about elimination reactions. I know that we've already covered E2, but I just wanted to make sure that you got it uh, again, so I've covered it in this video. Uh, we'll be looking at E1 and E2 elimination reactions. An elimination reaction takes place when a halogen or alkane um, under the conditions of hot concentrated alcoholic potassium hydroxide, it could be sodium hydroxide as well, uh, actually loses the bond to the halogen and also breaks a carbon hydrogen bond to yield an alkene by bringing those two carbons that are now are deficient in one bond and also gives uh, water and a halide ion. So the overall equation looks as we have uh, schemed out here for you. And those are the conditions. Yes, the potassium ion is just a spectator ion, so the reality is that you have the hydroxide ion and the halide ion. The potassium plus is just there to balance the charge so we can really forget about it in terms of the mechanisms. All right? Now, the type of a halogen alkane will actually determine the type of mechanism that the reaction will undergo. Um, if it's a halogen alkane, that is a primary halogen alkane, the reaction will undergo mostly E2 elimination by molecular or bimolecular elimination, uh, in which both the bond breaking and the bond forming are uh, happening concertedly, happening at the same time. Uh, in the case of secondary and tertiary halogen alkanes, they will mostly go undergo uh, elimination unimolecular E1. All right, and that means that there will be separate bond breaking and bond forming um, steps. And the bond breaking step is the same step that we have seen as well for the uh, SN1 reactions. All right, so in that case, they're very, very similar. Let's go ahead and look at E2 first. All right, so if we have an elimination uh, in which uh, it's, it's an E2 which is a bimolecular elimination, it means that the slow step takes place when there are two particles involved. It will be the halogen alkane and the strong base that it's going to remove. Uh, um, but what is the base that we're going to be working with? We can think of the base being hydroxide, but when you have hydroxide dissolved in ethanol, the most likely thing that it will form is the ethoxide ion. This oxide ion is a stronger base than um, the um, hydroxide ion, and therefore we will um, assume that that's what's going to be taking place. So we're going to have this small reaction that we see here, in which the ethanol reacts with the hydroxide to make ethoxide and water. And that will be kind of like the first step or step zero that happens in any of these reactions, because it is actually the ethoxide ion right here. I'm going to highlight it with the red. Um, it's actually what's going to um, be the attacking or the base um, agent. All right? So um, the E2 mechanism is a concerted bond breaking and bond forming cascade. And I use the word cascade because when you look at how we draw it, it actually does look like everything is happening because the other one is, because the other process is happening. All right, so if we have an overall equation for a primary halogen alkane, such as one, uh, propane one, uh, sorry, one bromopropane, all right, uh, reacting, well, we are going to get the elimination process product, which is going to be the um, uh, propene, all right, but how is this going to happen? Well, let's look at that. The first step of always, that zero step, is the formation of the ethoxide ion. Once we have the ethoxide ion, the ethoxide ion is actually going to attack a carbon-hydrogen bond in the neighboring carbon. It's, it's in the carbon adjacent to uh, the carbon with the halogen. And so, it does that in order to empty some space, some bonding space in the carbon. Remember, carbon wants to have four bonds. If we didn't remove a hydrogen on that carbon, there would be no way of making a double bond to that carbon. So the ethoxide ion is powerful enough to break the carbon-hydrogen bond 
uh, in a heterolytic fashion. It donates its electrons, which means that this hydrogen does not need any more of the electrons that were uh, involved in the carbon-hydrogen bond, which now can be involved in forming a carbon-carbon bond uh, because this carbon is delta positive. Uh, when those electrons come in here, the carbon does not want to have that extra bond to the bromine and therefore that gets broken. We could theoretically write a transition state for this, but there is no need for it. We're just going to write very quickly that cascade and we are going to break this carbon halide bond, this carbon bromine bond in this case, heterolytically with the two electrons going on to the bromine. Therefore, at the end of this very quick process, although it's, I should rephrase, at, this, at the end of this process, which is a slow step, um, we're going to end up with ethanol being reformed, the formation of our propene, and the formation of the halide ion. Now, if you saw the overall equation that I have at the top, I've made water. How is that possible? Well, because I started with the hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion made the ethoxide ion. When we add the reaction in the parentheses to this overall equation, we can see what cancels out. In the starting materials, we have ethanol, and in the products, we have ethanol. In the starting materials, uh, we have ethoxide. And in the products, we have the oxide. So when we add those reactions, again, we can definitely see that we will yield the overall equation. The halogen alkane plus OH under the conditions will give us the alkene plus water plus bromine. The water, again, is coming from the fact that it was synthesized. Uh, in the formation of the ethoxide ion. All right. If you instead went directly and instead of using the ethoxide ion, you used the hydroxide ion, then you wouldn't have to cross things out. But the reality is that um, the ethoxide ion is a more likely base uh, than the hydroxide ion in this particular case under these conditions. So that's why we have that. All right. Um, and that is. E2 in a nutshell. Of course, this, all these notes are online, so you don't have to worry about copying them directly from the video, but it's important for you to um, be able to see what is going on. It's a concerted process of bond breaking and bond forming. We're breaking the carbon-hydrogen bond, we're bo breaking the carbon-bromine bond, but we're forming a, carbon, a new carbon-carbon bond and a new oxygen-hydrogen bond. All right? Excellent. Now let's go ahead and look at E1. The process of E1 is when we have unimolecular elimination. Unimolecular has again refers to the slow step. The slow step is going to be the bond, the breaking of the carbon halogen bond, and it only involves the halogen alkane, just like it does in SN1 reactions. All right, and just like in the E2 reaction, the real base that is causing the reaction to take place is the ethoxide ion not the hydroxide ion. And again, just like before, it gets formed by the reaction of ethanol uh, and hydroxide. So if we have a tertiary halogen alkane, such as the one that I have uh, at the top of our, our page right now, uh, something like 2-methyl, two 2-bromo, two uh, sorry, 2-bromo, two 2-methyl two propane, uh, if we react that in the, in with alcoholic concentrated and hot uh, potassium hydroxide, we are going to get the elimination product, the propene, all right? Uh, and we're also going to get water and uh, the bromide ion being formed. Now, just like before, we have a small quick reaction that takes place between ethanol and the hydroxide to make the ethoxide ion and to form water, water from the product. So we've already accounted for one of our products. The first step then is the bond breaking step, and that is going to be a slow step. Let me write the word slow there. The bond breaking takes place um, when the bromine pulls the electrons off from um, the carbon hydrogen, the carbon bromine bond, 
and so those electrons come here to form the bromide ion. We're also going to form this carbocation intermediate. All right, this carbocation intermediate is stabilized. I haven't drawn it the same way that I, I draw it for SN2, SN1 because I want to see the hydrogens on the adjacent carbon so we can actually do that. All right, so the, the, the form, the way that I, I draw it is a little bit different. Could have I drawn it the same way? Yes, but it's important to see uh, where those hydrogens are coming from. The second step is a fast step. All right, let me write that down. And that fast step is when the S oxide ion is going to attack at the at, at a carbon hydrogen bond adjacent to the carbocation. All right, so that um, lone pair in the S oxide is going to bond to the hydrogen, which will then cascade its electrons, which are no longer necessary, to neutralize uh, the carbocation forming the double bond between the two carbon atoms. Uh, that also yields us the ethanol, which would cancel out the same thing with the S oxide, and we get the overall equation. Okay, so again, we get our hydroxide and our water and our, um, more importantly, our organic product, the alkene. All right, this is for a tertiary halogenoalkane. If we had a secondary halogen alkane, the reaction takes place pretty much in the same fashion. Um, look at the secondary halogen alkane here. We have two bromopropane, uh, and again, if it reacts first to form the carbocation, which is somewhat stabilized by the uh, presence of the two methyl groups next to the, the carbocation, that can donate some electron density, then the ethoxide can pull, the ethoxide ion can pull one hydrogen away. The electrons there uh, move to make a double bond between the carbon atoms, and we get the propene. Notice that this particular product is indistinguishable from the product that we got from the E2 elimination of one bromopropane. So one bromopropane and two bromopropane give you the same product, all right? Um, it's just a nice little thing to notice, all right? And when you add all of this together, you get the same overall equation. I didn't draw it again because I didn't want to um, trouble you too much, all right? But it's exactly the same process. Um, the ethanols cancel out. The ethoxides cancel out, and so we see that the overall equation would have the hydroxide and the water that are there. Okay, so I hope with this you understand uh, E1 and E2 elimination reactions uh, reasonably well. Excellent. I'll see you next time.